If you watched my last vlog from last week you'll have seen me opening some cherry and peach shells because I've been trying to germinate them with the shells on um, but since taking them off so it's only a week ago uh, where is it there is one that has already germinated because I can see the roots oh, I've, I've disturbed it all now so but I'll show you now so let's have a little look. Uh, it's probably the cherries, to be honest. Yeah, there you go. So, like I said in the last video, I had them in soil for, I'd stratified them, then had them in soil for three to four weeks, um, and nothing was happening, so I took the shells off. And as you can see, it speeds up the process. So I'll plant him in a pot on his own. Let's see if there's any more. Oh, there's a second one. So I've got six altogether that have already germinated. So that's six out of the 16 cherry. None of the peach have germinated yet, but I expect them to take longer anyway. Great, so I'm gonna go and plant them now in some pots. Today I've cleared some of my greenhouse, just tidied it a little bit so there's not as much rubbish. Um, it's still messy but I needed to clear an area to plant my melon melbas. I've um, got three melons so I'll just show you what I've done. So as you can see I've put whatever rubbish that I wanted to keep. Well it's not rubbish, it's stuff that I use you know <laughs> but I've just tidied it. Um, over there in that corner and behind those drums as well so um, now underneath here there was a, a big rug and the plan was originally to uh, put this down to suppress the weeds and put some um, bark chippings but it looks like the rats have taken all the bark chippings probably for nesting material over time so anyway, I just ended up pulling some of the rug back to expose some soil. Um, it is very stony, but only about an inch down. So I just um, dug down deep and planted them a little bit deeper than they were originally in the pots. I will give them something to climb. I'll put strings attached to the frame of the greenhouse. Yeah, so hopefully they'll do okay in here. So today is Wednesday the 4th of, 14th of June and um, I've mainly come to water. We've come earlier than we normally would. It's about... Oh, it's actually late. <laughs> um, it's just gone half past nine. Uh, my friend Jan, who's right over the other side, has left me a tub of water. So I'm going to water some things today, even though it's rained a lot at the weekend. Um, and she also reported that she's had a lot of her veg that wasn't covered, um, nibbled by maybe a deer or something like that. So I thought I'll just come and check. Um, I have had a bit of a nibbling on my kale, my curly kale over there, but that'll just be pigeons because it's sticking out from my frame. So I could tell it's them that have been nibbling. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't want to spend too long here because Connor suffers in the heat. He really doesn't like it. So um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I may just quickly do some weeding and clear a little area. I really want to get those leaks in, you see, so I'll see anyway. Anyway, I'm just going to get on with it. <laughs> sort of yakking. I'm going to pull out any of the radishes that have started to flower and they've bolted. If they've not got a decent sized radish on the end, so be it, but I don't want them self-seeding again this year, to be honest. 
um, I did eat the pods last year but there's just so many I couldn't eat them quick enough so I think I'm just gonna maybe clear to halfway along the bed then any that have flowered yeah that's the plan they've actually got a decent little radish on the end of these anyway so it's probably time I picked them any road This is the story of my plot. It's bricks. They're not even that way around. They're in the ground that way, some of them. And can I just show carpet? Like this deep down. Uh, <laughs> I implore people, anybody with a plot, please don't put carpet down for future generations to try and rip up <laughs> it's really really hard to do because you know if you're clearing an area that you don't want to you know you only wanted to do a little area you're having to get your scissors out and cut it otherwise you're ripping up a whole great big piece of carpet with like two inch of sod on it I'm only doing a little area for these leaks so yeah Connor's looking very, very hot. Well, I'll stay along now, Connor. Yeah, I'll just do this little bit and then um, in the water. So that's as far as I'm going to go up to, just almost to the end of the parsnips bed. It looks like some of my parsnips are missing, actually. Look at the state of this. I'm never buying this. Can you see it, Connor? buying this um, fleece again it is just shredded into little bits all over the place it's from Wilco's now. I do like Wilco's stuff but I'll not be buying that again so I've got all these bricks out there's bits of asbestos door handle bits of car I did find a little mirror though just to see if I'm looking beautiful <laughs> See, I told you there's bits off cars on, on here. Um, yeah, so, see what I mean about the carpet? Now, this bit of carpet here, I've just rolled it back because the rest of it is going under there. And it's much, just, you can't, I'm trying to do just a little bit at a time. Yeah, but if I wanted to do any further that way, I'd have to move all that anyway. But, anyway, I'm rambling now. I think my brain's gone too hot. <laughs> Right, so I'm going to put the leaks in after I've just loosened all this again because I've stood on it all. There you go. So I've done my best with this bed. Um, now with leaks apparently, what you're supposed to do to get a large white bit of the leak is to dig a hole, plant your leak in the bottom of the hole um, and just leave it like that and gradually fill it in I think filling itself over time that you just end up with a bigger white part there's a rogue red popping corn in here as well so I'll put him in over there where, with his buddies
him at the bottom put a little bit in but then leave it like that so it's sitting in a hole you don't know if that hole's too big or what but that's what I'm doing thank you very much for this water jam I know you watch my channel I don't know what I'd do today without you and your water This spinach has decided it's going to bolt all over the place since we're pinching the tops out the other day so I'm literally just going to trim it um, I mean I don't know how edible these bits will be but I'll try them and if they're too bitter or whatever one of the animals will eat it no doubt the rabbits or whatever I'll take some normal leaves as well I think though bag I'm not going to bother with the tiny bits I'll just blob them even the little ones that I'd only planted the other week they're bolting as well what I might do is to give them, them a bit more shade is pull this the rest of this netting over still so much weeding to be done these thistles just pop up all over the place that might give them a bit of shade it might help a little bit done there, my blueberries really suffering in this heat as well I believe they're like woodland type um, surroundings so maybe I should have planted it further towards the fence really for more shade I'll provide it some artificial shade, I think. And the goji berries. Uh, oh, it's still alive, just about. There's a little sprig. And the honey berry looks on its last legs as well. I promised myself that I'd have as much in pots, uh, as much in the ground this year as possible. Um, because inevitably I think we're going to have this weather every year so just try and have as little in pots as I can I'll let them soak in that for a bit I say a bit when the next come back in a week <laughs> um, I'll not be able to come here on Saturday so I might do a little bit more at home and that might be the end of this vlog but we'll see Connor's just picking some of the peas because some of them are ready. <laughs> nice. Nice. I like peas from Podsmore than, um, you know. Cooked peas. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> right. Well, mushy peas or garden peas, but you like them raw. Yeah, do you? <laughs> Some of the broad beans are, are ready as well. They've got big fat pods on. I think mainly just this big plant here. Mm. Uh, I'll have a chat through anyway. Bung them in my bag, have them for me tea. Connor's throwing pea pods at me. <laughs> <laughs> He's mean to me, isn't he? Yeah. Wow. Actually, I think they could have done with a bit longer, couldn't they? I'll leave them a bit longer, I think. I don't know, I don't know when you're supposed to pick them. I've never grown these before. I'll research first because I don't want to pull them off and waste them. Looking in here at this gourd plant, 
I've got those little black beetles. Now, they can be good pollinators, but um, the other year when I grew pumpkins at home, they were taking that much pollen, there was no pollen left, and I was having to put little bags over the um, over the flowers and bring in the male flowers and put them in uh, some water overnight to go and pollinate the female flowers in the morning. Now obviously I'm not here all the time at the allotment to do that, so I'm just going to have to hope um, that these don't go overboard. The raspberries are just starting to ripen as well. So this is the fall gold on this side. Um, just getting awesome. I've just seen a really ripe one. Where's it gone? Oh. I think it's been nibbled through the net. Maybe. Or maybe they've just fallen off. Mm. Gonna eat it anyway. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. We'll try a raspberry on a yellow one. Nice, aren't they? The currants are just getting the colour. This might be the red one. It's got a couple of reddish coloured ones. I suspect this is the white one in the middle. Um, I think this is my black one on the end. Yeah. If they don't, if they don't want to come off easy, they're not ready. Yeah, leave them. Yeah, they're not quite black. They're like a dark maroon at the minute, so I'll leave those. And the gooseberries. Got quite a glut of fruit at the minute, haven't I? Oh, dropped it on the floor. Do you want to try gooseberry corner? Not sure if they're quite ready. Just pull that little hard bit off the end and then eat it. I think this one's too small and it might be a really tart, but this might be extra tangy. Oh yeah, this one's really, really tangy because um, it's too small. <laughs> they're nice though. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> They're nice. Or do you not like them? They're medium. I'd eat them. Not okay. twist your arm. <laughs> I'll not twist your arm about it. I'll eat them myself. <laughs> so I've brought a good little harvest home there. Got radishes, peas and the spinach. I've just looked up about the spinach and I think I've only just caught it in time really. Um, to pick it and I, I will go back up I think on tomorrow or Friday and get the rest of it just pull the rest of it up and sow some more because as soon as it starts getting these little florets it starts to go bitter and the leaves start to go rubbery as well now I've even tried the, the whole thing at the top and I don't find it too bitter myself I will give those bits to the chickens though because I do prefer the leafy bit and I'll have those on a sandwich in a minute I think I'll slice some radish as well. And Connor will probably attack the peas. So I like to eat a lot of spinach and kale because they're full of iron and I have a problem that makes me anemic. So I'll try and eat as much of spinach and kale, spinach and kale as I can and take my iron supplements as well rather than keep going to the doctors about it and needing some uh, super strength iron. I'm still going good on this elderflower cordial that Connor made as well. It's absolutely gorgeous. Really refreshing. So 
So I'm off for a bath. I'm absolutely sweaty, especially after pedalling home. <laughs> I've moved some of the plants out of the greenhouse um, before they get cooked. It is extremely hot in there. So I thought outside they can get a little bit of wind at least, can't they? You know, he's not looking very well. These are the loofahs. Um, they are the, oh, French, dwarf French beans. Uh, what else did I bring out? Oh, there's the aubergine three night collection. They have all germinated. I've had a little diggle in the soil um, and the squashes as well. So all the expensive stuff, most of them have germinated. But I thought I'll definitely put those outside because the soil wasn't just warm. It was hot that they're in. So I thought they're better outside, aren't they? And um, this zebra grass here, I was getting worried about it because it was just green like that yeah and I was getting worried but it is developing its zebra stripes now apparently um, they do come up just plain green and then they get the zebra stripes later it did that last year but it didn't get this tall before it got its zebra stripes so they just wait till it's uh, more sunny apparently so it's just getting them now so that's a bit of a relief because otherwise it just looked like a great big grassy thing. Well, it is, is a big grassy thing, but not just a plain grassy thing. You know what I mean. And as hideous as it looks, I've had to throw some cloth over the water lettuce. It was going really yellow. So I've just researched it and apparently it can be because of lack of nutrients, which certainly won't be the case in this pond. Um, or too much sun so I think yeah they don't like getting scorched maybe I should move these little baby ones they're going a bit of yellow as well I might put them over there it's a bit more shady over there yeah let's do that sometimes um, if you've got big fish like there's two big koi in here they can nibble the uh, roots so that they can't get the nutrients well enough but they seem to be leaving them alone really so I'm just going to trap them amongst the water lily, I think, instead. Apparently goldfish and smaller fish don't really bother, but... I do know the koi do nibble at absolutely everything. Um, but the water lily's always been alright. It's good, it's big and strong. This one is actually an offcut from the one in the corner. I split it last year to take some up to the allotment. Um, I split it into about five bits. So they've got two up there. That must have been four bits unless there's two here. Yeah, <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, so the one at the allotment flowered last year as well and it was only a, um, a little chunk. It's not even in any soil, it was just like a big solid clump of roots. It looked like just a solid mat of felt, if you know what I mean. So anyway, I'll take that back off as it gets to later evening so it can get some sunlight. Well, I've only just done it, it's had been scorched all day. And the dogs are in, because the kitchen is the coolest place, actually. Uh, Bronte, go and lie down. Have a good night to join you, Cujo. Lie on the kitchen floor. So this is Thursday. I woke up at four o'clock this morning and I made a bit of a discovery. I tried to get asleep at first, but then I ended up on the internet um, and researching about using rabbit poo like you do <laughs> uh, after an hour. So I was researching about rabbit poo um, in your compost at about five o'clock in the morning. I think I was thinking about a pot that is behind me. It's got rabbit poo in it. Um, and it looks like little baby, little tomato plant seedlings that are growing in it. So I think that must have been what I was thinking. Anyway, 
my discovery was that rabbit poo is classed as being a cold compost rather than a hot compost so that means that you don't have to actually add it to a compost it breaks down by itself you can plant things in it straight away it won't burn your roots the same as a hot compost would so things like horse manure chicken poo your kitchen waste that creates a hot compost that would burn your roots um, so I thought I'd give it a try now the urine rabbit urine will burn your roots so you've got to try and separate it or flush it through now I had some sitting that from a cleaning them out a while ago I had some sitting in a bag so I thought I'm gonna try it because it's supposed to be really good for tomatoes apparently um, it's full of all kinds of uh, compounds like zinc and magnesium and things like that so some people have um, used it in pure rabbit poo there's no other compost no topsoil in it or anything so I thought I'm going to give it a try so I'm going to plant in it the cherry seeds that have germinated and the lemon seeds um, and try those and just hope that the urine's been flushed through but for me that's a really good discovery because I'm always running out of compost I've none at the minute even though I need some um, so yeah but yeah I'm surrounded by my plants at the minute because I've let Ellie out um, and I don't want to munch in all my stuff so yeah and I don't want to be around her either because she's got the grumps so it's watch your ankles time <laughs> It's probably because of the heat, I don't know, but... Um, so, I'll show you what I mean about these tomato seeds being in the rabbit compost. Now, I've 100% not sown any tomato seeds in it. I can only assume that I've fed her tomatoes, which I have, and she's had tomatoes sometimes, and it's passed through in a poop. So, yeah, I'll show you now. See, they look like tomato plants, just randomly growing. And there's um, sometimes you get grassy bits with the hutch stuff because of the uh, hay and the straw. You do get little grassy bits coming up, but they're really easy to pull out. You know, when you use it on your beds, um, there's a that looks like another one. Yeah, so one, two, three, four. There. And this is literally just out of the hutches there's no compost in here or anything and i've 100 percent not sown any tomato seeds in this pot there's actually a solanum uh, it's lost its flowers now it gets a purple flower on it's actually a member of the potato family but it's just an ornamental uh, shrub So yeah, I'll let you know how that goes anyway. What's up, Bells? You got the grumps? Hi. She's like, oh, leave me alone. Hi. <laughs> oh, see? I keep getting a little bit of a problem with aphids in the greenhouse and the strawberry tree outside. Um, I just keep going around squashing them. I know some people use um, soapy water, don't they, but does that not just move them on and then they go and choose another plant to attack? Um, so that's why I, I just keep going around squashing them. Um, in the greenhouse though, it's mainly just on my chilli peppers that I've bought, not the chilli peppers that I've sown myself. I've not found any on those, so mam probably aren't as nice and tasty are they to them um, they're a bit more spindly they don't look as healthy as the shop bought ones um, yeah and there's also some little i don't know what it is whether it's a beetle or um, a spider sorry i don't know if it's a beetle or a spider some little tiny tan colored round thing and i keep squashing those as well because something's nibbling these ones down here 
and I don't know what it is I can't find the culprit so I'm tending just to squish everything that I find on them <laughs> um, there was a lovely little ladybird on uh, one of these this morning but I can't find it now so it's moved on I probably probably squashed a bit too many aphids for its liking and it's gone somewhere else but um, not one of our native ones it was one of those orange and black ones um, yeah so I'm just going to keep coming a few times a day and just squishing them actually so um, like I said I'm not going up to the allotment on Saturday but I don't know if I might pedal tonight by myself because probably one of the reasons I couldn't get back to sleep this morning was because I'd forgotten to put any netting over the, those leaks and I was just picturing pigeons pulling them out of the ground and tossing them to one side and then them drying in the sun so I want to go up and get some netting over that and I'll probably just take uh, two one litre bottles uh, just to water something um, Andy's off tomorrow though on Friday so uh, I don't know we've got a bit of a busy day I'd like to go tomorrow really but we'll see anyway but I'm not going to film it so um, that's it for this week's vlog please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time bye